Shalom and greetings from Jerusalem. My name is Joan Lippis or hashtag Joni in Jerusalem. Again, welcoming you to Lunchtime Prayer for Israel, part of the Novea Ministries family. And again, as I say all the time, don't forget to subscribe and check out our website, novea.org. And so, of course, it's end times. And again, we add the category Jerusalem. What a privilege, Jerusalem. And the title is the New Jerusalem. As Daniel prophesied, there will come a day when God will restore the Garden of Eden in his eternal kingdom. But his requirement to enter that eternal kingdom is perfect righteousness. Perfect righteousness. Now, before we go to that requirement, because the description is so beautiful, I want to read a little bit more of what that kingdom is going to look like. So you're really going to hunger to be part of it. Okay? So I'm reading from Revelation 21, verses 1 through 8. The Apostle John is speaking. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Isn't that interesting? A si the city, the city, New Jerusalem, is compared to a bride. Interesting, isn't it? And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is is done. Remember what Yeshua said on the cross, Telestai, it is finished. And here God is saying in Revelation, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But, and here are the requirements, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, means witchcraft, idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I don't know about you, but that's challenging. That's a challenging list of requirements. And friends, there is not one of us, not one of us, that would pass. And so, beloved, we can't end on that note because God is merciful and precious in his sight is the death of his saints. He wants to see all people come to the saving knowledge of his son, Yeshua. He wants to fling the doors open to the new Jerusalem. And that's why, that's why we want to read these precious words that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans, Romans 4, 
verses 16, 23, and 25. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace that the promise, the promise of what? The promise of right standing before God, the promise of righteousness might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are under the law, meaning the Jewish people, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, talking about the promise made to Abraham that he was considered righteous because he believed God. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Yeshua our Lord from the dead who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. It's who we believe. Do we believe the Father? Do we believe the Son? And will we receive the Holy Spirit? It's your choice, beloved. It's your choice. And meanwhile, we want to pray the church the church made up of Jewish and Gentiles who believe that Yeshua is God, deity, and the Messiah, that the church will proclaim the whole counsel of God and not minimize or accept sin. And sadly, there are an awful lot of people, an awful lot of pastors, an awful lot of leaders and teachers who will accept the sin, saying, well, we need to love the sinner. Yes, we need to love the sinner, but we must speak clearly against the sin, the sin according to the word of God. You want to enter into the new Jerusalem? You heard the requirement. And with that, I leave you to conviction of the Holy Spirit, as I say, the Hitraot, Shalom from Jerusalem. <laughs>